hello. Just so you guys know, I'm feeling kind of, you know, barfy right now because I just got done eating way too much popcorn. Uh, it's probably not the popcorn. It's the 10 squirts of butter that I put on my popcorn when I'm at the movies. And then I wonder why I don't feel good afterwards. That has nothing to do with what I'm going to share. I just wanted to, you know, share with you guys kind of where I'm at right now. So it doesn't mean that I can't share something cool that I feel like God has said and something cool that I feel like God is saying. Okay, are you ready? So I got my handy dandy message version Bible out because I wanted to share the scripture in the message version because it's so funny. So in Matthew 23, the other translations, you guys might know it as the chapter where he's talking about Jesus is talking about the Pharisees and he's talking about calling no man your father and no man your teacher. And a little while ago, I was praying for some friends of mine that were really kind of going through a hard time and they were trying to find, they were just battling with finding the right church or finding just a, a place where they felt like they belonged. And I knew it was a spiritual dynamic as I was praying for them. And they're mature believers and they have so much to offer the people that are around them, but we can still get sucked into this. Okay, God, where do I belong? Like, where are my people? Where's my tribe? And you know, where are you going to use me the most? And what happens is we get stuck in this looking for our identity through the church or looking for our identity through the world that doesn't have it to offer us. And as we die to looking for that and we're living to glorify God as we're trusting Jesus and we're coming into a greater revelation of the Father's love for us, we realize that thing that we were chasing that can sometimes become ambition and it can sometimes become title chasing. We receive the truth of God's approval over our lives that sets us free. And then we get to function from a place of authority, whether people recognize it or not, whether people recognize us as pastors or prophets or apostles, whatever it is that God's called us to be. When God calls us that, it doesn't matter what men think. And of course, there's a natural order to things. And of course, God's called people to serve in certain areas of the church with different uh, giftings and different anointings. But it's exactly that. It's to serve one another in love, not to exalt one another. And so all of that to say, I was kind of praying and God was really speaking to me through chapter 23. So I'm going to read it. Are you ready? And then I'll share a little bit more with you. If I remember what it was, I was going to say. Something about a net. So remind me about the net vision God gave me. Okay, so Matthew 23, Jesus is saying, Jesus turned to the uh, address his disciples along with the crowd and had gathered with him. The religion, scholars, and Pharisees are competent teachers in God's law. You won't go wrong in following their teachings on Moses, but be careful about following them. They talk a good line, but they don't live it. They don't Take into their hearts and live it out in their behavior. It's all spit and polished veneer. Instead of giving you God's law as food and drink by which you can banquet on God, they package it, package it in bundles of rules, loading you down like pack animals. They seem to take pleasure in watching you stagger under these loads and wouldn't think of lifting a finger to help. Their lives are perpetual fashion shows, embroidered prayer shawls one day and flowery prayers the next. They love to sit at the head table at church dinners, basking in the most prominent positions, preening the radiance of public flattery, receiving honorary degrees, and getting called doctor and reverend. Don't let people do that to you, put you on a pedestal like that. You all have a single teacher and you are all classmates. Don't set people up as experts over your life, letting them tell you what to do. Save that authority for God. Let him tell you what to do. No one else should carry the title of father. You have only one father and he's in heaven. And don't let people maneuver you, maneuver you into taking charge of them. There is only one life leader for you and them, and it's Christ. And in the other translation, it's so cool. There's a part in there that says, we are all equals. And I think a lot of the times we, we can go to church and we can start looking at pastors and we can start looking at leaders and we're feeling like if we receive those positions, then God can use us. And I think what happens is we end up believing what Jesus has done in the Holy Spirit in us 
isn't enough. So it keeps us living in the future as opposed to walking in faith and the Holy Spirit working through us exactly where we're at right now. Does that make sense? So anyways, in all of that, you know, just interceding for my friends, I was on a bike ride and I love just praying when I'm riding and it's so cool how I feel like God will meet me there. I was riding and I felt like it was the Holy Spirit said the funniest thing as I was riding. So as I was riding, I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit and he said, you know, you're just a guy walking in faith. And I thought, what? And he's all, you're just a guy walking in faith. And he's all, you're not trying to build a church. You're not like trying to make a name for yourself. He said, but because you're walking in faith, as I'm empowering you to just trust Jesus, he said, your business, your tattoo shop looks like a church. People come there and they encounter me. And he's on your friendships look like fellowship. You end up talking about me and praying for one another. He's all, you don't do it on purpose. He said, it's just the fruit of your faith in Christ. And it was so liberating to me because I knew God was resolving this question in my heart as I was praying for my friends. God was saying, we're just people walking in faith. Yes, we can be giving, you know, grace and we can be given anointings and we can be giving titles from God, but it's all from the perspective to serve one another, not to be recognized like what Jesus is talking about the Pharisees. And if we fall under that ambitious mindset, we fall away from the reality of the Father's approval for us. Does that make sense? So, as I was just continuing to hear God's voice and he was sharing that with me, I thought, that is so cool, God. I'm just a guy walking in faith. It never, as far as the world's concerned, it never needs to be more complicated than that. I don't need to be affirmed of. I don't need to be recognized because I know you affirm and you recognize me. And you'll give me the ability, God. You'll give me the grace and whatever it takes to serve you and to serve the people around me the best way that I can as you empower me. And as I was writing, God gave me this vision and I saw this huge net and I knew the net represented the body of Christ. It represented the church. And I saw all of these fish that were caught in this net. And as opposed to being released, which I knew they were supposed to be released to walk in the fullness of who God had called them to be now that they were caught, they were stuck in the net. And they were just sitting there year after year after year. And I asked God, what am I seeing? And he said, this is the church in a lot of areas where they've caught the fish as fishermen, as my net going out there and saving people and bringing them into the kingdom. They get stuck looking for their identity from the church or looking for their approval from men. And I saw the word release in my vision and God said, I want you to proclaim, I want you to release the people that are stuck in their net, that are waiting for title and waiting for position before they'll go out and do what I've called them to do through their simple faith in me. So they can go out in the approval, under the approval of the father, free from needing approval from this world. And so as I was riding my bicycle, I just started proclaiming it. I'm like, God, I just release anybody that's stuck, that's been waiting year after year, day after day, looking for their position, looking for their place in the church, God, when you've already given it to them, Lord, when you died on the cross, when you poured out your Holy Spirit on us on the day of Pentecost and all the other days following your accessibility, Lord, your spirit, God, that's alive within us, that's waiting to be released, Lord, as we're standing in faith, trusting you with us so, God, we can serve the people and the world around us. Isn't that cool? So I just wanted to pray for any of you guys that are watching. If you feel stuck, if you feel like, man, you know, I've been going to the same place or I'm jumping from church to church and I'm just looking for a place where I fit in that what Jesus has done is enough. You have your position, you have your place in the presence of your Father, where Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father and we're seated in the heavenlies with him, that you're free from seeking your place on the earth, that you can find your place in the presence of your Father 
in the reality of his approval over your life through the sacrifice of his son and the authority that you need to be everything that God's called you to be. And I just pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.